Hey guys, it's your Marcus of Magi here and today I'm going to be giving you some recommendations of what you can read for the mage prompts in the book Junkie Trials. <laughs> don't know what the book junkie trials is it is a one month long readathon that is happening throughout the entirety of july it was created by rachel marie from rachel marie book junkie and i will be co-hosting as the leader of the mage team there are three other co-hosts and they are riley from riley marie sophie from sophisticated books and zafina from the psycho nicks if you would like to learn more about this readathon as a whole i will put the link to my announcement video up here so essentially this is a map based readathon and we will be following our path line along the map to find the bookie grail. Now each stop on the map has prompt and today I am going to be giving you recommendations for most of the prompts along the mage path. So I won't be doing the whole map, I'm just doing the mage path today because I already have a lot of books to show you so the entire map will be a bit of a struggle. The last prompt on the map is the group book so I won't be giving you any recommendations for that one but the other four locations and prompts are Ark Grove to read a book that is gory, gruesome or gritty, Old Pirate Cove to read a book that takes at least in part on the sea, Glimmer read a beautiful or colourful book and the Draconic Isle to read a book that features dragons. The only one that I'm not going to be giving you any recommendations on is going to be Glimmer which is to read a beautiful book and the reason for that is that a beautiful book is very subjective. You could pretty much pick any book for this as long as you find it beautiful. And so showing you the pretty books that I have probably won't be helpful if you don't also find them beautiful. So before we get started on our first location, I would just like to say that one book series that I will not be mentioning in this video is the A Song of Ice and Fire series by George R. R. Martin. Any book in this series will fit for any of the prompts in this readathon. This can be considered gory, gritty and gruesome. It contains dragons. There are some very pretty editions of it, like I really love my edition. And there are also various points throughout this series where our characters are by the sea or travelling by boat. So if you are participating in the Catch Up Book Club read along for this entire series that is hosted by me, or if you just want to read any of the books in this series during this readathon, they will fit for every single prompt on the mage path. I have tried to fit a variety of genres in here. There are no more than two books per genre, or at least that's what I've tried to do. I read predominantly fantasy. So there may be a couple of fantasy recommendations for each prompt but aside from that I have tried to pick one book from as many genres as possible so no matter what genre you read I should have something that you could read for this readathon. So the first location is Orc Grove to read a book that is gory, gruesome or gritty. Now as well as picking different genres for this prompt I have also tried to pick different levels of gory, gruesome and gritty. So if you have a really weak stomach and you don't particularly like these types of books I have some things that would be considered all of these things while still not being super super graphic. So my first recommendation for this prompt is going to be A Young Adult Dystopian and that is Scythe by Neil Shusterman. This is a futuristic story that takes place in a world where humanity has conquered death. You cannot die unless a scythe gleans you. The world building in this is absolutely excellent. The main characters that we follow in the story are two apprentice scythes and they follow the scythe that they are apprenticing under around on his job so he is killing people. There is also a sector of scythes that are really fond of massacres so this could definitely be considered quite gruesome but this is one of my lighter recommendations for this prompt as nothing is too graphic in here. My next recommendation is a young adult horror and that is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. This is a horror slasher book so it is very similar to movies like Scream and I Know What You Did Last Summer just in book form and it follows our main character who has moved to live with her grandmother as she is escaping some things that she did in her hometown that she's not particularly proud of. She's lived there for about a year now and suddenly people start to be brutally murdered in her school and she may have reason to believe that she may be one of the serial killer's targets. This is a horror and it's a slasher so as you can imagine there's quite a bit of murder in here. It would definitely count for gory but once again it is one of the lighter ones in here so while it's a bit stabby it's not too graphic. For a manga recommendation I have Anything by Junji Ito. The only one of his mangas that I have read is Goyo but he also has Tomi and Uzumaki which are both in the same vein as Goyo. Goyo in particular follows a young couple who are on holiday. When the fish in the sea grow legs and start to crawl out on shore and terrorize the occupants of this holiday resort. This is not for those of you with a weak stomach. I think the thing with 
Junji Ito's work is that the storylines aren't particularly horrific, there's no psychological horror aspects in there, but the imagery and the art is extremely graphic and a little bit nauseating. So if you do not like that kind of thing, stay away from these, but if you want something that's really disturbing, then a horror manga by Junji Ito may be for you. An adult horror recommendation would be The Alice Geology by Christina Henry. This is an Alice in Wonderland retelling in which Alice is in a sanitarium and her roommate is called Hatcher. He's been put in there for violently murdering people. She's in there because she went to Wonderland and came back and her parents didn't believe her, so they locked her away. And one night, those two escape, they build a friendship, and then they have to navigate Wonderland to get wherever it is they want to go. This would definitely come under gritty and gruesome. The Wonderland in these books is very seedy. All of the areas are operated by a different crime lord, and all of the crime lords deal in selling girls and young women. So that's the kind of thing that you're getting into in this one. Also, I would like to say a lot of these books I have not read recently. So if you are sensitive to any trigger warnings and would like to read any of the books that are in this particular section of this recommendations video, then I would highly recommend that you look up a full list of trigger warnings. As for some of these, it's been such a long time since I read them that I can't remember all of the triggers. For an adult thriller, I have You by Caroline Kepnes. This is a thriller story from the perspective of a stalker. So we are in the mind of Joe who works in a bookstore. A girl comes in one day and he quickly becomes infatuated and obsessed with her and starts to stalk her. Now this is deeply disturbing as it is told in second person perspective. So Joe is always talking to you. It's things like you walked past the window and you got on the train as though you are the person being stalked, which really adds a nice twist to this. this this is also really interesting as you are in the mind of the stalker. So even though he's stalking somebody, you do kind of end up rooting for him. It is a little bit gory and a little bit gritty, but it's nowhere near as graphic as Alice or anything by Junji Ito. So if you're not too into gory stuff, you will be okay with this. For a young adult thriller, we have Sadie by Courtney Summers. I would recommend listening to this in audiobook. And if you don't usually listen to audiobooks, you could use this for our weakness, which is to read a book outside of our comfort zone. But Sadie is told in two perspectives. It is told from the perspective of Sadie herself. Sadie's sister was found dead. Sadie believes that she knows who killed her sister, so she goes out and hunts for him. The other perspective in this story is told from a guy who runs a podcast who has been contacted by Sadie's foster parents and she would like the guy who runs the podcast to find out where Sadie has gone and what happened to her. So you are following Sadie as she goes to find the killer and you are following this guy following Sadie. The audiobook for this is great because these sections in the perspective of the podcast guy are told in podcast form and it has a full cast and sound effects and everything. So I would definitely recommend the audiobook for this one. For adult fantasies, I have two recommendations. The first one is the Poppy War by R.F. Kong. Now this one comes with all the trigger warnings. There is one chapter in particular in this book that is very graphic and very detailed and it concerns a massacre. So The Poppy War is a grimdark fantasy and it is based on the massacre of Nanking which is a real event that happened in history where a large amount of soldiers went into a city and slaughtered absolutely everybody. Rebecca Kong who wrote this book wanted to draw attention to this event that is often looked over and so she wrote it into the narrative of her book. The storyline for this book is that we have a girl who is from a very poor province of her country and she wants to get into this prestigious military academy so she can escape the place that she lives. The only problem is that when she gets into it the country goes to war and as she is in the military academy she is also forced to go to war and her along with the other students in her class realise even though they have been in a military academy training for war it does not really adequately prepare them for what war is actually like. So this one is gory, gruesome and gritty lots of graphic stuff in this one so be careful. A popular one that everybody is talking about in, on Twitter is Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. This one is another adult fantasy. It is not as graphic as the pop you are but this follows a girl whose father was murdered and whose mother was taken away. She runs away when this is happening and she's taken in by a guy who then prepares her to enter an assassin's academy and the reason that she wants to join the assassins is so that she can take revenge for her family. This one has lots of stabbing and murdering, lots of sex. Definitely adult themes but this is nowhere near as graphic as the poppy war is. For a young adult fantasy we have Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. This follows a girl who is forcefully taken from her home to become one of the king's concubines. The king is a demon king and every year 12 I think girls are recruited to become his concubines. Trigger warnings in this as it deals with sexual assault and these scenes are a lot more graphic than you would expect in a young adult novel. If you like non-fiction I have two to recommend by the same author and they are From Here to Eternity and Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin 
Caitlyn Doty. Caitlyn Doty is also known as she has a YouTube channel called Ask a Mortician and she is a mortician that makes videos on what it's really like working in the industry, what really happens when you die, different types of burial and things like that. I find both her books and her channel to be really informative and the way that she presents this information is definitely very entertaining. She is hilarious and I really enjoy everything that she produces pretty much. She also has a podcast. But the two books we have here, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes is her experience working in the industry as a young woman when she started out, the things that happened that she wasn't expecting and some little funny anecdotes. And From Here to Eternity is about when she travelled various countries looking at different death customs, the way they bury their dead and the rituals associated with death in different countries. For example, the Day of the Dead that is celebrated in Mexico is mentioned here. For a young adult contemporary, I have The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. This book follows the Black Lives Matter movement and is about a girl who is travelling home with her friend after a party one night when they are pulled over by the police and he is shot and killed. Very hard hitting, very important topics in here and would really recommend if you have not read this yet. And then finally I have an adult contemporary and that one is All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. This is about a very young girl whose mother is a drug addict and whose father is abusive. They are very negligent of their children and they leave their very young daughter to look after her baby. I think it's her baby brother. Her father is also a drug dealer and one of his friends comes into the house and really helps the little girl out. He helps her get to school, he helps keep the house clean and they develop a relationship. So trigger warnings for paedophilia in this but I definitely think that it opens your eyes to a lot of things and it's definitely a really interesting book about hope and how things that are really shitty can be the best things that ever happen to you when everything else is really shitty. So moving on from Orc Grove we have Old Pirate Cove and these are books that are set at least in part by the sea. So first up I have a manga recommendation and that is Children of the Whales by Abby Umida. This is a fantasy manga series that follows 14 year old Chakuro who is an archivist on the Mud Whale which is an island that floats on the Sea of Sand. One day they come across another island and they send scouts out to see what's supplies they have there and the inhabitants of the mud whale encounter the first humans they have ever seen from outside of the mud whale the entire time that they've they've been on it. There's a cool magic system in here, the art is absolutely beautiful and while it starts off as a really pretty picturesque fantasy there are a lot of elements of brutality in here that I did not expect. For a children's or middle grade recommendation I have Hell's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. This follows Sophie who is the eldest of three children. She works in her family's hat shop and one day the Witch of the Waste comes in and puts a curse on her that makes her an old lady. Sophie then decides to go and find her fortune and on her way to wherever she is going she comes across Howl's Moving Castle which is owned by the notorious wizard Howl. When she's there she strikes up a deal with a fire demon that in exchange for breaking his contract with Howl the demon will turn her back into a young girl again. This is very whimsical, very cute and in Howl's Moving Castle you have a door that opens onto different locations and one of these locations is a seaside town. For a literary fiction slash historical fiction kind of read I have The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a male male romance. It details the relationship of Patroclus and Achilles. It follows the events of the Iliad but it's told from the perspective of Patrocles who in the original myth is a close friend slash lover of Achilles and this is set by the sea because a decent part of this story takes place on boats and they are also living right by the sea for a very large portion of the story. For an adult fantasy recommendation I have Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. This is an epic high fantasy. I can't really describe the plot of this succinctly. This is set in a world where the majority of people are scared of dragons. Once upon a time there was a huge dragon called the Nameless One that was terrorizing everyone. They thought that they killed him but what they've done is they, they've put him to sleep for a very long time and they have reason to believe that he will come back sometime soon. In this book there's lots of traveling and crossing oceans but there is also a group of people with an opposing view to the people who hate dragons and those dragons are water dragons. A lot of them live in the sea or at least swim in the sea and that location is completely seaside and beachy based. For a classic recommendation I have Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. This follows a young woman who works for a rich old lady and then while they are on holiday I think in Monaco the old lady falls ill and the young woman meets and falls in love with a handsome widow called Maxim du Winter. Shortly after they get married and he takes her back to his home Mandalay where, the, where she is then haunted by the ghost of his ex-wife Rebecca. As you can see the sea is on this cover as Mandalay is situated not far from the 
sexy. For an adult thriller recommendation, I have The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. This is a murder mystery type thriller and it follows a woman who is a travel journalist and for one of the pieces she has to cover she will be going on this exclusive cruise. When she is there she gets very drunk. I think she also takes some painkillers and she wakes up in the middle of the night because she can hear a scuffle and she stumbles out to her balcony and she sees somebody throwing a body into the sea and even though nobody believes her because she is so drunk she is determined to find out who was thrown over the side of the ship. For a young adult fantasy I have Sea Witch by Sarah Henning. This is a Little Mermaid retelling but it is the original Little Mermaid like the Hans Christian Andersen fairy tale and it follows a group of three teenagers, one boy who is a prince and two girls. Quite a few years ago one of the girls drowned but one day a girl walks out of the sea who bears an uncanny resemblance to their dead best friend. For an adult sci-fi I have Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. This is the first book in the Southern Reach trilogy. This is very twisty and hard to describe but essentially it follows this area of land that is closed off from the rest of the world and very strange things happen there and a government agency called the Southern Reach has been tasked with finding out what this anomaly is and what's going on in this area. So they have been sending expeditions of people in to investigate. This follows the account of a biologist who is sent in there with three or four other people and one of the prominent locations in Area X is a lighthouse on the beach. As I said before we are skipping Glimmer. So the last location we have is the Draconic Isle which is to read a book with dragons in. Now Jade from Jaded Reader has just done an entire recommendations video that goes into different types of dragons as well as recommendations of some awesome books that have dragons. Every book that I have read with dragons she has mentioned in that video so instead of just going through them all again I'm going to link her video both up here and in the description box so you can check out her recommendations because she has way more than I do anyway. So because Jade has already covered every dragon book that I've already read. I'm going to be showing you a couple of books that I have that I haven't read yet that contain dragons that Jade did not mention in her video. So the first two are by the same author. We have Uprooted by Naomi Novik. I believe that this is a fairy tale. There is a wizard in the woods and every so often he kidnaps a girl and our main character is worried that her best friend will be chosen but she gets chosen instead. Now I don't think that the dragon in this one is an actual dragon. I think the wizard is called the dragon but there is definitely some sort of dragon thing in here. Also by Naomi Novik we have the Temera series. Now this is a series that is completely about dragons. This is one of the UK editions. I believe that in the US and in other editions the first book in this series is called His Majesty's Dragon but my particular edition the first book is called Temera and I have to be honest I have no idea what this is about but I just read the synopsis and this also takes place by the sea. And in other two books by the same author the first one is Serafina, the second one is Test of the Road both by Rachel Hartman. Both contain dragons. I believe that this one is a spin-off from this series but you can read this one without reading this series and I have absolutely no idea and I have absolutely no idea about the plots of these but what I do know is that this is a world where dragons and humans are fighting against each other. There has been peace for quite some time but something happens that disturbs that peace. So that took a lot longer than I anticipated. Those are all of the recommendations I have for you today. Please let me know if you are participating, if you are a mage or if you are from another team and you are aiming to complete all of the challenges on the map. Please also don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe subscribe if you want to. If you head to my description box you'll find a link to my Goodreads Instagram and Twitter if you'd like to follow me on any of those as well as a link to my bookish body butter and candle website, the Instagram for that and a 10% off discount code. But that's it from me today guys. Bye! Oh you bite your friend like chocolate You say you're go when nobody knows With guns hidden under our petticoats We're never gonna quit it, no we're never gonna quit it, no